Hey, what's up? Today, I wanted to share my experience with Linux Mint Debian Edition and why I'm switching to Pop OS. And overall, I've had a great experience on Linux Mint, but it's just that I, there are so many Linux distributions that I feel like I also have to try other ones. And so if you're new with Linux or if you're simply interested with Linux uh, distributions, then this video could be for you. So let's go right in. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is Linux desktop PC. And so as of right now, I've been using Linux Mint Debian Edition for about two months now, and I've been using it every day as my daily driver. And during these two months, I haven't used Windows because I completely switched to Linux. And so the only times that I use Windows during these two months or basically when I had to go to some friends to help them with their computers and so obviously if my friends are using Windows and they need my help then like I still have to use it in any way but you see some people warned me that I should keep Windows closed or maybe keep uh, Windows as a dual boot or something because usually they would warn me that Linux isn't fully ready for a full desktop experience and as of right now I've been using it for two months now and to be completely honest I never felt the need to go back on Windows except uh, for the very first days because I was I wasn't so sure if I was making the right decisions because in the beginning uh, my problem is that I had problems with the NVIDIA drivers and because of that I had to install it manually and because of that gave me a bunch of issues that, I, I, that kind of scared me a little bit. But over time I was able to do everything that I was able to do on Windows but on Linux. But you see I think that everybody is in different situations so uh, some people might need to use Windows to use certain softwares or to play certain games that are only available on Windows and that might have poor compatibility on Linux. So in my case, uh, I am self-employed, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so I can choose my own tools. And so for me, it has, been e it has been easy to simply switch all my applications and everything that I was doing on Windows to go on Linux. So I've been using Linux for for everything and from my experience I think that Linux is quite ready to use it as a full desktop PC experience. And so the second thing that I wanted to talk about is what I liked about Linux Mint and I like the fact that I had all of the tools and all the softwares and all the tutorial, everything that I need out of the box. And so when you install Linux Mint Debian Edition, you will have all the most important softwares and you'll be able to start being productive right away. And so in my case, I needed productivity and creative softwares like Thunderbird, GIMP, Inkscape, OBS, Web Browser and Steam for gaming. And those are the tools that I needed and are that are avala mostly available uh, by default. And if the tools are not installed by default, then you can use the software manager, which is kind of similar to Windows Store, or if you're on Windows, or on the Apple Store on MacBook, or if you have a phone, an Android phone, then it's kind of similar to the Google Play Store. You can download the application and you can search for it and you can download everything that you need. And if the tools that you need are not on the software manager, then you can probably check if you can download the software directly from the website. And so, for, for example, in my case, I was using DaVinci Resolve for uh, video editing so in this case it was not available by default and it is not currently available in the software manager and so we can still go on the website and download it manually from the website but that being said I think that to be completely honest most people what they need the average person what they actually need is simply a web browser and obviously Linux also have uh, web browsers. And so overall, I think that Linux Mint is a very solid choice if you're starting with Linux because you'll have a strong community to support you and everything is working out of the box. So the third thing that I wanted to talk about is what I disliked about 
uh, Linux Mint. And my experience here might not actually apply to everybody, but in my case, I'm a PC gamer and I also edit my own video. And so that means that I might have some more advanced needs uh, compared to the most average user because I, I actually have to use and work with, with my GPU. So my computer has an NVIDIA GPU and by default, uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition comes with an open source uh, graphic driver that was installed by default and the driver that I was using was not enough. Another thing to keep in mind is that on Linux Mint Debian Edition, it doesn't have the driver manager like the normal Linux Mint or the Ubuntu based Linux Mint. And so if you actually need the NVIDIA driver, then it's a little bit more complicated because uh, you kind of have to install it manually using the terminal or whatever. And so you might need to do that or learn to do that. And so I think that ideally to make it convenient for new or experienced user, we should make it easier to install that particular driver and we should not need a terminal to install uh, the NVIDIA driver. Another solution would be that the open source driver would be good enough to uh, run video games and also do some video editing. So in my case, I was using DaVinci Resolve and I'm also using Steam Proton to uh, play video games. Another thing related to the terminal is that if you have more advanced needs or if you need more advanced software from your computer, then you might need to use the terminal or download things from the terminal. For example, you might need to download the source, the code from GitHub so that you can use the software on your computer. And so, for example, uh, you might want to use Automatic 11.11 on your computer. So you might need to go on GitHub and download the software on GitHub. And so these things might not be necessarily attractive for everybody. So, so ideally, I think that it would be great to have some sort of installer or maybe it can be available on the software manager or something. Another thing that I disliked uh, is that over time, my computer sometimes would literally freeze, uh, nothing would respond and I had to wait two to maybe five minutes so that the operating system could start responding again. So. I'm not sh quite sure what this is related to. Maybe it is some sort of driver that is not working properly, but from time to time, we, I mean, it was not that often. It, it would happen maybe like once a week or once every two weeks or something. But uh, the, my screen and my computer would literally freeze. And I think that most of these cases, uh, it happened when I was using my web browser and I was using the Brave web browser and so I was not able to really find the problem because it kind of happened out of nowhere. It would literally freeze. I was no longer able to use my keyboard and my mouse and so the sound would stop and everything would stop. And so I'm not quite sure what the problem is, but that's a problem that I had. And also another problem that I had in the same optic is that when I was gaming from time to time, I would lose the sound for a few seconds. It was not for too long, so this problem, it kind of happened for 10 seconds from time to time, but it, it, it happened quite frequently in this case. So the game was not freezing, uh, it was still working fine, I was still able to play, but it's just that from the time this sound would just stop for a few seconds. So again, I'm not quite sure what the problem was, so uh, maybe it's related to some sort of driver or whatever, but in these cases it only happened when I was playing video games. So if you're not playing video games, then that might not apply to you. So the fourth point that I wanted to talk about is clean proprietary softwares. And so two months ago, when I switched from Windows to Linux, I was used to using proprietary softwares. And during these months on Linux, I switched most of the software that I was using from proprietary to open source, free and open source, but I was still using uh, proprietary softwares. And so now that I'm going to switch operating system, that gives me the opportunity to clean and remove more property softwares 
and switch to more free and open source alternative because by switching operating system, I'll basically start over from scratch. And so, for example, in the last months, I've been using DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve is also available on Linux. And so I was using the software on Windows, but it's also available on, on Linux. So I've been using it in the last month. And now I truly think that DaVinci Resolve is a great software and I highly recommend it. But I think that I'm going to try a free and open source alternative, like something like Caden Live or maybe Olive and see how that goes. And I also think that DaVinci Resolve is a great software, but to be completely honest, I don't really need something that powerful to edit my videos. So in my case, the videos that I create are quite simple. I just need to cut a few things and do a couple of transitions or whatever. And so I don't need a big, powerful software. So that's just something to keep in mind. That being said, I think that GPU rendering is quite an important feature for me because in my case, I have the computer to actually run uh, powerful softwares. And so I appreciate the fact that I, I can use my GPU to edit my videos. So yes, yeah, switching operating systems uh, gives me the opportunity to clean and remove more property softwares. That being said, I think that there are some things like the NVIDIA driver that as of right now, I don't see myself uh, without them. And so in my case, I have an NVIDIA GPU and I play video games and I edit my own videos. And so I think that as of right now, and the NVIDIA driver is still the best option for me because I want to play video games and I want to do all these things. And so maybe at some point I'll be able to replace it for a free and open source alternative in the future. But as of right now, I don't think the free and open source alternative is quite ready to uh, really make the switch. I don't think it is the best option for me as of right now. So the last point that I want to talk about is why I'm switching to Pop OS. And so first of all, Pop OS is another Linux distribution that is targeted for beginners and that, uh, that is easy to use. It is based on Ubuntu and everything is available out of the box. And they also have encryption by default for more privacy. So I think that's pretty cool. And for me, it's quite important to be stable and that everything works great out of the box because as of right now, I don't really want to fight uh, with my operating system. I know that some people are into that and I got some recommendation to use Arch, but I don't think I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm quite ready for that because I appreciate the stability, but I don't know, maybe that's going to change in the future as I get more comfortable with with Linux, but as of right now, I would prefer having something stable over something that is more bleeding edge and that creates more problems. Another cool thing that I love about Pop OS is that it is especially targeted for creative professionals and gamer, which is basically exactly me. I'm a, I'm a creative professional. I create designs, I use GIMP, I use Inkscape, I use video editing softwares, and I'm also a gamer. So Pop OS, they seem to target this audience. So that's kind of where I fit. So in that mindset, another thing that I love about it is that you can choose a version of Pop OS of the Linux distribution that comes with the NVIDIA driver pre-install. Now again, we could go into the debate into proprietary and open source. As of right now, I own an NVIDIA GPU and I don't think the free and open source alternative is ready to work for my needs and for gaming and Steam Proton and maybe even video editing softwares. But I don't know, maybe at some point, as I said before, maybe I'll be able to use a free and open source alternative to the NVIDIA driver. But just like I said before, the NVIDIA driver as of right now seems like the right choice for me. Another attractive thing about Pop OS is that they are developing their own uh, desktop environment that they call Cosmic. And so I've heard great things about it. And so I'm kind of excited and I kind of want to try it out and see how that goes and if I actually like it. And maybe I'll make a video about it. 
So in conclusion, as of right now, I think that Linux is getting more and more ready for daily desktop use and use Linux as a daily driver. And so in my case, I've been using Linux Mint Debian Edition completely for these last two months and I, I've had a great experience, but again, that might change depending on people's situation. So if you're completely new with Linux, I would recommend that you get uh, the Linux Mint Normal Edition because the Linux Mint Normal Edition has the driver manager and it is probably easier for for you to install the NVIDIA driver so that you don't have to install it manually. And so if you're going to use the Linux Mint Debian Edition and you also need the NVIDIA driver, then you might need to install it manually. That being said, if you're seriously considering Linux, it is probably a good idea to learn all the terminal works because you'll actually uh, need to use it and to learn how, how it works. I've also had other minor issue, but it was completely terrible. I had problems with my sound and sometimes my computer would freeze from time to time. But for now, I'll be switching to Pop OS, which is another easy to use Linux distribution that is targeted for gamer and, and creative professional. And so we'll see how that goes. And so that's pretty much it for this video and I hope that this video was helpful to you and this, if this video was valuable to you, you could consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel and if you have any thoughts or comments, you can leave them below because I will answer everything and your thoughts and comments could also be valuable to other people. So that's it for this video, okay? Peace.